The One Piece. The One Piece is real. What is going on, YouTube? It's your boy, Yalito, aka Jumping on Another Jet. And I'm here with you guys to talk about One Piece Film Red, the newest One Piece movie. And uh, me personally, it was the greatest One Piece movie I've ever seen. There's so many things to talk about with this movie, from the fight scenes to all of the character cameos. And we need to also talk about this. But without further ado, let's just jump right in. One thing I really liked about this movie is we got right to it right away. There was no time being wasted getting into the plot. So as soon as we got into the world, you know, we saw the Straw Hats, we saw uh, the environment, and then soon after we got Uta's first song. It wasn't too long afterwards that we got the second song, and that song showcased a bit more of Uta's abilities while she rocked the sort of Urza Scarlet transformation which I enjoyed very much. Now I think it's a good time to talk about the musical aspect of this movie. A lot of people were disappointed by this. They thought, you know, you know, it was just Uta singing the entire movie. And I feel like if you felt that way, then you weren't really watching the movie. I mean, first off, the songs weren't too long. You could tell when it got to the more battle-centric parts of the movie. Uh, that one, the fights were incorporated within the songs, or two, they would cut the songs a little shorter so we could get back into the plot. And it just made it for a nice little, uh, you know, taste of the songs that would be in the album later if you did partake in listening to it. I did. I enjoyed the album thoroughly. My favorite song on the album was Where the Wind Goes. That, that was a banger. That was an absolute banger. Back to the musical aspect of everything. It works so well for a movie this ambitious because otherwise we would have to be far removed from the canon to have all of these characters in one place. Uh, especially, you know, thinking about Katakuri and, and Law and uh, Shanks. You know, I know Shanks was headed to Wano, but you know, Katakuri was in the middle of a fight with the Germa, you know? So the idea of uh, the Song Song Fruit allowed for all the characters to be there in the first place. The next thing we need to talk about when it comes to this movie is the fight scenes. Compared to other One Piece movies, the fights were lackluster. Uh, you could tell like there were so many characters that everybody was kind of limited to one move and at one time and not even a, a special move at that when it came to the cameo characters. Katakuri, he had one hit in the entire movie Whenever it was a straw hat scene, every straw hat had to take a hit or contribute in some sort of way. And I get it, you know. You gotta appease every single fan out there. For instance, I'm a big Frankie fan, so every time I saw Frankie throw a punch, I was hyped for that. But it wasn't as flashy of a fight as in other movies. Like, Luffy didn't even throw a Red Rock. A lot of the fights, they were very, very close up and they were very limited uh, when it came to frames. Uh, there weren't any far shots or anything like that, which was kind of kind of disappointed, I would say. Nonetheless, it didn't ruin the movie for me. I was mainly into the movie for the plot and for the cameos and things like that. So since those things were satisfied, I wasn't too worried of a big fight like Stampede or Film Z or Strong World or anything like that. But what made up for everything, and I mean anything in the movie, was the final battle. I mean... It did have its flaws for one top musica. I couldn't figure out its anatomy. Like it felt too fan phantasmic. It was. It didn't feel like the hits connected. It was just kind of like chopping at glass and, and it shattered, you know, when it came to the final fight, which was very unsatisfying. It wasn't that cool to see it uh, be defeated. Not only that, I, I didn't grow an attachment to it as a villain throughout the movie so I you know it was kind of here or there it was just a great medium to showcase all of these characters working together and I accept it for that I really do I didn't care that it had to be a mega uh super oars or something that they had to slash down I just wanted to see what I saw which was Usopp and Yasopp side by side fighting I fell out of my seat when I saw that happen when they linked through observation hockey and and just started commanding just directed all right left foot 
right oh man that was that was gorgeous i i i was welled up i was ready to cry that made up for everything but one hot take i have to say the person that disappointed me the most was shanks shanks is not flashy man i i his kit is very basic shanks kit is very basic like all he does is just hold his sword up he might slash it one time. He doesn't even call out any cool Viking names for his moves. I mean, it's just, all he does is the conqueror hockey shit and that's not a flashy move. Like, man, like you gotta give me something. You gotta give me something. And so Shanks, uh, he, he, he fell short as far as like what I wanted to see from him. But if I had to rate the battle scenes as a whole, it's, it's gotta be like a three out of five or something. There was a lot that was wished for that wasn't delivered and i get it too uh when you have a, a film this big you kind of have to pick and choose maybe but you, i i would have asked for them to go all out another case too is when everybody was asleep in the real world and uta had the ability to control them like zombies it would have been nice to see fake fights like ben beckman versus zoro just temporarily you know or, or Luffy versus Shanks, just like a temporary spout because the plot allowed for it to happen. These are just my, my thoughts on it. Let me know what you guys thought about the battle scenes. If you think I'm wrong, if you think Shanks actually has a good kit, let me know down in the comments because Shanks. All right, and now to wrap this video up, I just wanted to mention some of the canon things that we got out of Film Red. We got a lot of great information out of Film Red. And just in case you missed it, I'll list a few of them. Right off the top, we got Shank's last name from the Gorosei. They mentioned it briefly, and if you weren't paying attention, you could have missed it. But Shank's last name is Figureland or Fearland. We don't know what that means yet, but we know that's a mighty name based on the way that they described it. Another thing we got that you may have missed was that Shanks was the baby on Roger's ship. If you remember back in Roger's flashback in Wano, Roger mentioned that it, it was a long time since they had a baby on the ship. And everybody was wondering, well, who could that baby be? Well, we got a glimpse of Shanks recalling when he was looking up at Roger as an infant. So now that's confirmed. From the last fight, we also learned that Katakuri's observation hockey is child's play to Shanks' observation hockey. The way that he sunned him during that fight was pretty funny. One thing that I'm nervous about is the fact that Shanks never encountered Luffy, but Yasop encountered Usopp. So will Yasop and Usopp's reunion be diminished or will we see something uh, greater than what we saw in Film Red? That's still left up in the air, but I really hope that we get a great reunion from them. And one last thing that you may have missed, and I mentioned it in the beginning of this video that we needed to talk about the Sunny, because if you noticed, in the end credit cutscene, we got about a 15 second clip of Luffy talking to the Sunny and then recalling a conversation that he had with Uta and then just retracting his hand. So to me, I believe that meant that the Sunny has a soul and it may serve a purpose later in the story. Because if you recall, Uta's ability worked on souls. So we'll see how that plays out. We also got introduced to this new type of fruit called the wake fruit, which if consumed causes the user to stay up as long as they want, but at the adverse effect of them losing their minds. And we know of a specific pirate that doesn't go to sleep, Blackbeard. So is it possible that the wake fruits are canon and that Blackbeard consumes them? I, well, we're gonna see, we're gonna see, but all good stuff. One thing I really wish I got to see, which when it was teased, I was hoping to really get a full in-depth uh, look at it, was Gear 5's transformation process. I know they're probably gonna save that for the actual reveal in the anime, but I would have loved to see if he melted in the same way in order to transform, or was it like the quick transformation that he did briefly in one of the recent chapters of the manga. But that about wraps it up, guys. Let me know what you guys thought about Film Red down in the comment section below. And if you're not already subscribed to the Circle Club, subscribe now. 
uh, for more One Piece updates. And check out some of our other content too. We review plenty of shows and drop videos daily. So if you don't want to miss out, definitely subscribe. Drop a like if you made it all the way to the end. And I'll see you next time. Peace.